Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. It's another eBay score that I've got. This is a HP, yes, none of this Agilent or Keysight rubbish, 4263A LCR meter. And it's an oldie but a goodie. Dates from about uh, 1990 or thereabouts. So, geez, it's amazing to think 1990 is like 25 years old. But anyway, it's an oldie bit of goody bench LCR meter. And I rather like these things. The user interface is a, a little bit clunky as we will uh, see later. But I like the fact that they're nice and small and compact. It is not as wide as a big, uh, you know, 19 inch rack mount uh, unit. It's not that deep. It only weighs uh, 4.4 kilos. So it's relatively uh, cheap to get one of these shipped and I picked up this for uh, I saw it on there for uh, 200 US buy it now and I offered lower than that and it was accepted and postage was reasonable and so it came in pretty good so for a it's a 0.1 percent class um, LCR meter it can do more than LCNR can like measure transformer parameters open short compensation do all sorts of fantastic stuff. So I thought we'd take a look inside. I don't think I've ever taken the hood off one of these puppies before, so let's check it out. Now, don't confuse this with the 4263B model. This is the A model, which is the older one with the single line LCD. If you can pick up the newer B model uh, for a decent price, even better, but I think they go for a lot more because they're, you know, they were uh, Keysight, uh, sorry, Agilent bloody branded and they went uh, for a lot longer. This one was discontinued. Oh, I'm not actually sure. Hey, let's have a look. But uh, yeah, they're, they're basically um, equivalent. The uh, B has a new uh, dual line LCD. Hey, got a bit of dust inside this puppy, which is uh, quite unusual because these things don't have a fan. Another thing I like about them, they're uh, completely passive. Look at that. A nice linear transformer in the thing and beautiful. Let's check it out. Oh, and wouldn't you know it, I'm out of air duster spray to clean this thing up. Damn it. Um, so sorry, you get the uh, you get the grotty unit. So yeah, I'm rather surprised at the amount of dust in here. That there's no um, fan in it. So, you know, how does it... Uh, I mean, you know, it's got vent holes. Maybe it was um, sitting in a rack, something like that. And you, know, you can get uh, rack extensions for these that plug in the side. So you can plug them into 19-inch racks and maybe it was getting airflow from the rest of the system or something like that coming through the vent holes on the uh, side over here. Anyway, um, it looks very neat and tidy. I like it. As I said, we've got a big thumping uh, linear transformer here. We've got, interestingly... There's our diode bridge, okay, but we've got this little hybrid board with surface mount on the bottom and two uh, probably linear regulators on the top there with little pissant heat sinks on them. So that's rather, rather interesting. Got a big, big bridge rectifier there and we've got our two big uh, filter caps there, Nippon Chemicons, no worries whatsoever. Um, 105 degrees C rated, thank you very much. And there's our uh, our front panel terminals. They've got little uh, common mode toroids on them just to uh, keep the crap out. And nice uh, board to board uh, B and C's for those. Very nice one. Looks like we've got some input protection with the diodes there. And because uh, these things you don't want to go apply in DC voltage. And it probably tells you that. There it is. Discharge test device before connecting. If you hook up a big thumping electrolytic capacitor, charged up to it, oh, it can ruin your day. Interestingly, they've got a DC to DC converter in here. They've gone to all the trouble for this nice linear uh, power supply arrangement, and then they've got this little DC to DC converter brick, and that's powering something over here. So I'm not sure, oh, it, yeah, in down in there. So I'm not sure what the deal is there. Hmm, this top board here, obviously the uh, processor interface. This puppy looks interesting. Oh, this dust is... Horrible. We'll take a good look at that in a minute. Um, it's uh, the GPIB. Uh, it's driving the GPIB, so that'd be our GPIB 
chipset up there, and uh, that's probably our processor. We'll take a look at that. And there's the money shot for you, 68,000 fanboys. Obviously the main processor there, and it's the HC version. Awesome. And we've got ourselves an NEC SuperCap, 0.22 farads there, 5.5 volts. Uh, no rechargeable or uh, primary lithium battery to leak in this thing by the looks of it. Excellent. I love SuperCaps. And none of this modern flash rubbish. We're going old school. Zycor X28C64 E squared prom. So that'll hold all your uh, non-volatile settings. And then we've got ourselves a um, AMD uh, EEPROM here for the main program. One meg. It's a decent size uh, EEPROM, let me tell you. And there we go. 1992 vintage. But the main processor here is 52nd week 94, so uh, this thing was built in 1995. And check this out, very interesting package. Look at this, I've rarely seen something like that. It's obviously some sort of uh, National Semiconductor uh, custom. ASIC or a uh, gate array or something like that. So if anyone's got any info on that, please leave it in the comments. That is fascinating, and of course it's all tied in to the process, you can see all the traces, and uh, everything else, so, wow, some sort of, uh, it's almost like some sort of system glue logic, you know, tying that, look, it's tied up here, maybe into, maybe it's, do some, it's doing some memory as well, and things like that, so, so, it's almost like some sort of, you know, glue logic that you could have done in, uh, a, you know, a CPLD or a little uh, FPGA or something. But, yeah, so that makes me suspect that's some sort of uh, custom gate array from National Semiconductor. And it wouldn't surprise me in the least if they upgraded this when they went to the B model with the uh, dual line display, because this thing probably went obsolete by, you know, <laughs> like the end of the 90s. I'll show you the rear panel as well. Uh, main selection here, so you know, no worries with uh, buying these internationally at all. And uh, we've got external DC uh, bias voltage, external trigger, the handler, in handler interface. These things are important because LCR meters like this are designed for like you know automated system production testing and stuff like that. So you'd have this digital handler interface which can control you know uh, limit switches and you know. Uh, all sorts, you know, bed of nails type um, stuff for your product under test and uh, all controlled via uh, GPIB, of course. And made in Japan. All the best stuff's made in Japan. And for those wondering why it's made in Japan, because that's a bit unusual for HP gear, isn't it? Well, not so much, because this explains everything. Why HP? Yokogawa HP. It's This is actually uh, designed and probably manufactured by Yokogawa for HP. They had a partnership for lots of um, uh, high-end test instruments and things like that. Serious dust under here, that's for sure. I really need to clean this sucker out. I might have to head to J-Car and get an emergency can of uh, uh, compressed air to clean this out. Anyway, interesting. We've got ourselves a, a little uh, shield there that's... Uh, uh, trying to do some RF shielding for this vertical board here, which, by the looks of the big capacitors on there and the resistors, and there's some surface mount stuff on the other side, I reckon that is the um, device under test uh, range resistor select board. Because if you don't know how these LCR meters work, well, I've done a video on that way back in the day, which I'll link in here. Check it out if you haven't seen it. And the way these things work is that they put a resistor in series with the device under test, and that's the range resistor, which we'll see later. We can actually select that on the front panel. And with that resistor in series, of course, you, measure, you can measure the voltage and the current, uh, and hence the current going through the resistor, and you can also measure the voltage of the device under test, and from those, from the voltage and current uh, through the device under test and the phase, you can actually calculate every parameter of the device under test, inductance, capacitance, uh, reactance, series resistance, dissipation factor, quality factor, you name it, you can calculate all this stuff. And in the video here, I've gone through um, and showed you the formulas that actually makes that happen. Now, unfortunately, I can't bend that board back because I'll break it, but aha, uh -huh, look at all these precision-y looking 
resistors on here, plus a couple of little uh, SO chips, which are probably muxes to uh, choose the range on there. So yeah, I reckon that's got to be the range resistor select board. Now I couldn't find a service manual for this 4263A model, but I did find the service manual for the B model, uh, which by the way looks like it came out in about 2000, so about 10 years after they originally did the A model. Um, and by the way, looking at the block diagram, it looks like it may sort of have the main chip over here, but like a similar layout, but it could have changed. Anyway, we have um, the overall theory of operation and it's exactly as I explained before I've showed it in the other video but yeah we've got a um, the device under test and a range resistor and it just measures the voltage and the currents going through the device and from that voltage current ratio measurement principle you get the impedance and from that uh, there we go it only focuses on the impedance the other parameters LCR and every quality factor dissipation everything else uh, is derived mathematically from the measured impedance values so it's rather quite simple we've got a signal source here selectable test frequency 100 Hertz 121k 10k and 100k in this case we've got our device under test so they're measuring the differential voltage across that here and then they're measuring the current through the device with a range resistor here which they can select in it's anywhere from like 1 ohm up to 10 meg or something like that as we'll see later in the uh, software and they just feed that multiplex that into an ADC and Bob's your uncle you can calculate anything very simple technique but there's a bit of math and filter in everything else which uh, goes behind it and here is more of the practical implementation how they do it here we've got the uh, four terminals on the front here so they do uh, Kelvin connection right at the device under test for compensate for your test leads we've got our signal source here which uh, uh, generates from our current terminal and then we can read that off and then they can just multiplex that and whack it into an ADC and there's your range resistor on the low end side there too easy and we've got ourselves a, a Shea Keizai, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm sure I'm not. Once again, Jap Japan, because it's a Yakagawa product, so, you know, no surprises uh, for guessing that they're using Japanese chips in here. It's rather obscure, AK9201A-VP. Can't really find a data sheet for it, it's, you know, you get all the false leads on the, on the uh, merchant websites and stuff like that, but of course, based on... Uh, you know it's an analog part because A, you've got these electrolytic caps around it, there's no like big digital stuff going into it, and look, they've got some resistors around here, and you know, look, it, it just looks like an analog, analogy type chip, and what's it going to be in this thing? Well, we need that analog to digital converter, don't we? So I'm pretty darn sure that is our analog to digital converter, so I'm not sure what, uh, uh, type it is it's probably some sort of you know um, maybe a dual slope uh, converter or something eh, not entirely sure but anyway definitely analog to digital converter and we've got ourselves a rather crude DAC in here as well the 0802 and that is for setting your output uh, signal level because ta -da, here's your output uh, block diagram we have our reference oscillator here, that's our DAC there that we just saw, and we've got ourselves a low pass filter, and then the uh, DC bias uh, source, you can turn that off and on, they just sum that in, and as we saw before, you've got an external uh, connector on the back if you want to feed in your own uh, DC bias, and a buffer, and then the source resistor, that's not to be confused with the uh, range resistor, so that's the source resistor driving your device under test. Because as you can see, not only can you set the uh, frequency here from 100 hertz up to 100k, but uh, you can also set the uh, voltage level as well, and for voltage uh, dependent uh, devices, that can be a big deal, so you know, this has uh, fixed steps built in, or you can actually feed in your own externally. And we've got ourselves an Intersil uh, 82C54 there. That's a uh, programmable uh, timer counter chip. And that puppy next to is just a very small uh, PAL there. So they've just got some uh, glue logic associated with that uh, timer counter. Not sure why they bother, because the board is, you know, chock-a-block with all this other uh, discrete logic stuff. And down on the front end here, no surprises for finding uh, precision op amps. In this uh, case, uh, Burr Brown, there, they were the duck's guts back in the day. Um, OPA 627s, they're uh, precision die fit. Oh, I've done this bifet rubbish, bifet uh, op amps. We've got ourselves another regulator board down in there by the looks of it, but uh, yeah, it is actually a different SMD layout on the back. 
to this one we saw over here. So I'm not sure what the deal is there. Now I'm actually doubting that it's a regulator board. I think it could be something else. Actually, if you give it a moment's thought, you can probably figure out what this board does. There, power transistors, and I'll tell you why. We've got ourselves the DAC here, right? That DAC, as we saw on the modular block diagram, the DAC, of course, drives the signal level. We've got some filtering around here, probably. And then we've got the output buffer, which has to drive, ta-da, this wire here, which is our positive high current output there. There it is. So that is obviously our output uh, driver board with a couple of power transistors on there. So some things like that actually become very obvious when you just, you know, follow the path and just put on your thinking cap for a few seconds and uh, try and figure it out. So yeah, I'd bet my bottom dollar that's a buffer amplifier board. And as I said, I'm willing to bet that's our range resistor uh, board there, or what they call the uh, transducer there. So I reckon that's uh, probably it. They're doing some uh, mucks in, in there and of course would contain the range resistors. It's just curiously uh, placed because it's on the um, system diagram of course. It's on the low side. So here's our low side over here and well it's going in over here. So hmm, having a, a few doubts but it just seems to match just like the physical um, you know, the physical arrangement of what's on there and stuff like that, but eh, interesting. Um, so yeah, we do not have the uh, schematics uh, for this thing that I could uh, immediately find, but if uh, you do have them, please link them in, and then I will uh, put always, always put the link in down the bottom for those who want to play along at home with the service manual. Always fun. And on the mains side of things here, it's all very neat and tidy. It's got the requisite uh, input uh, protection and all the jazz. I like it, apart from the fact that uh, what wouldn't cut the mustard these days, all the exposed uh, mains wiring on the back of the voltage selection uh, switch down in there. So, yeah, that's not too great, but still very neat and tidy. So that's a look inside. So we might now just uh, power it up and have a little play around with it. Now, the 4263B service manual that I got, sadly, it doesn't have any schematics in it. It's got the block diagrams, theory of operation, parts list, all that sort of jazz. But as is quite common, um, yeah, no schematics. You only got that in like, gen like the uh, printed out version, possibly, and nobody's scanned it in. So, yeah, bummer. So let's power this puppy up. And uh, it was like it was just sold as kind of like as is. Um, so I like the uh, 14 segment uh, display on these things. Fantastic. There we go. 4263A. Oh, what, what was that? Hang on. Whoop. Let's put it up. Yeah, they've got the uh, 14 segment uh, Starburst uh, display and Rev 2.00 option 001. Not sure what option 001 is. It might be like external DC uh, bias or something like that, which... Um, in a lot of uh, gear like this, you might uh, pay extra for, especially in like the old um, Fluke Phillips um, LCR meters. I think the DC bias was like an optional extra. Now, the only issue uh, with this thing, it seems to be, you know, seems to be doing the business. Of course, we're going to get overflow and, you know, everything else because uh, we've got nothing uh, hooked up. All the sense is not hooked up. So basically what we do, these are the current uh, drive lines which actually drive the current through the device and then of course you've got your sense terminal so it's a four terminal uh, Kelvin uh, measurement system. Now of course you can get really expensive um, add-on pods which actually plug directly onto the front and then they've got the uh, traditional two terminals for your uh, device under test. I don't have one of those, I might actually make one up but uh, in the meantime I've just made up a nice little adapter with uh, four BNCs and um, I've just got the uh, sense terminal joined inside there so now we can just measure two terminal devices, easy. And as you can see, the BNCs are a bit crusty on this thing. Could actually replace them, or you could try and clean them up. I might do that later, but yeah, they've, they've seen better days, but the actual um, internal uh, contact is still okay. So here we go, we're just measuring a 0.1 mic cap here in uh, series mode. And here's the thing I don't like about um, this series of uh, LCR meters, is that the user interface is a, yeah, it's a bit d dicky. It's um, a bit difficult to use. It's not the easiest thing to uh, drive. You really have to get used to it. But anyway, uh, we've got all the different measurement parameters and the way you do it is a bit uh, weird. You go into measurement parameters and you'd think that
that you'd be able to uh, select those with your up down arrows but that actually changes your main men like your main menu options see six of eight here so on the first we can measure impedance so Z is impedance so you can get impedance and that is like phase angle so if we actually chose that we could actually measure the impedance of our capacitor plus the phase angle so we could actually go in there and you see it's changed from series capacitance to displaying the impedance at that particular frequency we've got a hundred Hertz we can just choose the different um, frequencies we want here so let's just leave it at 100 Hertz and our drive level 50 millivolts that's going to be fine that's not going to the signal uh, the the uh, voltage dependency of this cap is not going to be uh, it's not going to matter much if at all no it's changing bugger all there at 1 volts there we go it's changing a little bit down there but eh we'll just leave it on 50 millivolts and of course you can see that we've got um, negative 90 degrees there because it's almost an ideal capacitor. Well, it's a, it's not a bad cap. It's doing all right. Minus 90 degrees, as your basic um, theory would suggest. And of course, if we put an inductor in there, ta-da! The voltage is going to lead instead of lag, like we got on the capacitor. Yay! Just like the theory, it works. So yes, rather uh, unusual interface. So you go your measurement parameter like this, and uh, then we can, and of course, we can get the resistance as well and then for all you admittance fanboys out there yes you can measure the admittance with your phase angle and then you can measure your uh, conductance with your susceptance <laughs> and then you've got your parallel uh, capacitance with your dissipation factor as your secondary measurement so basically what we're seeing is primary measurement secondary uh, display and then you can get your uh, parallel capacitance with your quality factor if you want or whatever and then you can get series capacitance, just like we'll see in a minute on the Agilent uh, handheld meter. And once again, so series parallel with quality or dissipation uh, factor. And then inductance uh, parallel, of course, with our quality or dissipation factor. And then series inductance. And then we can get uh, with the DC resistance as well. And then we can get into um, transformer uh, type stuff and uh, the impedance as we... So, so lots of measurement functions on this thing. It's really quite nice. So there we go. If we measure the uh, series capacitance of that, very small dissipation factor, half a bees dick there, or well, I don't know, four bees dicks, is it? And we can uh, set like we can do averages and things like that. That is actually uh, ten averages at the moment. This is actually a very fast, um, a, a very fast uh, meter. As you know, like the update speed is actually quite quick because it's a, a system meter so it's designed for quick uh, production measurement and things like that and then you've got uh, comparator stuff we can you can set up so so you know component binning and things like that and you've got your bias set up you can do uh, a reference uh, offset if you want so like a delta you can yeah there it is they've got like a delta reference and you can actually choose which parameter you want to delta so you can choose uh, CS so we can actually delta out that one that we just did. So it's a rather convoluted system to actually uh, do this, but we can go in there and then we can go uh, on. Oh, no, I goofed it, did I? Yep. Screwed the pooch. Ah, it's a really annoying user interface. You've got, you know, like if you don't use it for a while, um, you will uh, certainly forget how to use the damn thing. So let's see if I got it this time. Reference, go in there, and then we can choose, there we go, from off, delta. So we've got to press mode again to go over to delta, and then we press enter, and ta-da, there we go. We've now got delta uh, series capacitance. So actually, why it didn't uh, cancel that out and is now showing zero, I'm not sure. It should have. So it looks like it can't take the delta from the component under test, or maybe it can, but anyway, in this case, it looks like I've got to actually uh, delta out. Let's say we can delta out uh, 10 in there. So let's do that. And no, doesn't like that at all. Oops. Oh, maybe I got the units wrong. I don't know. Anyway, these... I think you get the idea. These things are a pain in the ass to drive if you haven't RTFM'd. Okay, so we're getting 100.26 nanofarads at uh, 100 hertz. So let's uh, try that on our handheld meter.
There we go, that's not too shabby, 100.22 here. Um, once again, we're in series mode there at 100 hertz, so all the same measurement parameters. The, uh, the uh, actual signal test uh, level isn't going to really make a difference here. So there we go, it's pretty done close to spot on. This is a is this is one of the best handheld um, LCR meters you can get uh, in my opinion the U uh, 1733 C it's a bit pricey. I know you can get like those cheap um, uh, ones on eBay for like you know 80 bucks these days and they're pretty good but uh, yeah if you can afford it this one's a pretty decent uh, meter but this one as I said like 0.1 percent uh, class uh, instrument and they're actually the uh, the accuracy specs of these are actually quite complicated. Um, it's it's not just you know a simple 0.1%. They got like a whole chart and everything for it. But as you can see, it's um pretty much bang on after 20 years. Awesome. And you can set up other things like uh, cable compensation. You can do open short. I don't think don't know if this does open short load compensation. I think the B model uh, does. I won't go into what uh, those is. I might have done that in a previous video. But yeah, you know, and you can set up triggering all that sort of stuff for all the automated handling interface uh, as we saw on the back. And you can do all sorts of weird and wonderful things. There's lots of uh, stuff in there that I haven't um, in the setup which I haven't actually shown. So, but it's a very powerful versatile bench LCR meter. So there you go, that's the HP 4263A, and I think it still pretty much holds its own today, you know, 0.1% uh, class with all the capability. Yeah, the user interface is a little bit annoying, but you know, if you can pick up one of these, like I did for under uh, 200 US bucks, then I think, you know, it's pretty much a bargain, especially if you can get the new uh, B model, it's just got the nicer uh, dual line dot matrix screen and things like that but I believe it's almost identical uh, functionality but even for a 20 year old instrument it's really quite nice and I like the form factor too it's you know it doesn't take up a huge amount of space on your bench it might be a bit bigger than some modern um, LCR meters might be a bit deeper or something like that but you know I think it, it does pretty well it's a nice compact instrument and Check them out on eBay if you can score one. So there you go. There's another quick teardown of another eBay score. Hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, I'll link to uh, data sheets and things down below and forum comments. Catch you next time.